that we took a path of nothingness and if we don't understand the nothingness then the path doesn't make sense to us. <laughs> if we're coming through the door thinking of our somethingness, all this uloom makes no sense to you. So repeat again for myself that I took a path of nothingness. What Sayyidina Yunus said, Subhanaka ni kuntu min adhalimeen. Laila anta subhanika ni kuntu min adhalimeen. Ya Rabbi glory be to you, so, glory be to you and that I'm nothing and I'm an oppressor to myself. So if I don't acknowledge I'm an oppressor to myself, efface myself, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Not that people abuse me, that I'm not arrogant, I'm coming against my arrogance. I come against with whatever you gave me Ya Rabbi that don't let me to be a rebellious one, don't let me to go astray, don't let me to anger you and what you gave to me I give back to you of my free will and ask to enter into your oceans of submission. So then I have an existence Allah sent me onto this earth. I came from an ocean of light. Allah sent that soul of mine from that ocean of light into this form. And in this dunya all these forms are existing. So I have a form, there's another form, 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 form. All these people are in existence but Allah sent them to annihilate themselves because I gave you a free will. I gave you an existence, reach towards your reality and your actual reality is to be nothing. It wasn't the reality to be Pharaoh and to acquire everything because the apex of that is Pharaoh. Well, ana rabbi al ala, I'm the Lord Most High, I acquired everything. My wealth and power deem me to be sovereign. I don't need anyone, I have all the wealth in the world. I command life and death. This is the, the apex of that mentality. So Allah gave to us, take a path in which to be nothing. The highest servant is the one whom Allah gave everything and He gave it back. That, Ya Rabbi I'm giving you my will back, I'm trying my best to submit into this world. Then Allah guided them to a path in which to annihilate and efface themselves. So then if I am a form and another form and we're all gathering here, we're all friends, we're gathering. If this is Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah is in front for worshipping. If you come in life with your form then you keep saying, Iyaka na'budu, this one, that I'm only worshipping to you, I'm only thinking of you. You gave yourself a, a tremendous importance, you came ahead of the line because if you keep to your form and keep with the world of form. You're, you're in a competition, you're not here behind where Allah made Sayyidina Muhammad the Imam. Why? To teach you stand behind, it's not important to you. So why we have Salatul Jama'ah? Why Allah wanted your prayer to be in Jama'ah? Because when the Imam is reciting what you're doing is not important. So in your jama'ah Allah is just showing you, it's not important, you just show up. Just show up, move like He moves. And when He makes du'a, what do you say? Ameen, nobody asks you to make du'a. So the rules of jama'ah Allah is effacing us. And you, and you, you get what, 72 times reward for praying in jama'ah? So to always be in jama'ah was always a reminder, you're not here. 
You're not the Imam because the ultimate Imam is Sayyidina Muhammad So even in our form and in our ibadah of our form Allah always puts us behind that when the Imam is reciting, recite in your heart silently. In fact it doesn't really matter what you're doing because nobody's asking you. When the Imam goes in ruku you follow, the Imam said, Allahu liman hamidah. Every focus is on the Imam, but the Imam recites, angels are listening. There's nothing from sharia saying that they're listening to what you recite. So in, in the salah on our dunya Allah pointing all this reality out. What imagine then the salah with your soul? in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad in Allah's Divinely Lights. If in dunya your form is required to be behind the Imam, then imagine in a world of light where there is no more form, your light is mixed into the ocean of Muhammad and Rasulullah All the lights when they come into vicinity they enter into oneness, there's no form that separates them. So our life was to lose your form. If you lose your form you entered back into the oneness, you entered back into the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah Then you understand what Ya Kanabu do? Is this one talking to Allah The Imam talking to Allah The Imam talks to Allah and says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Where are you? In there. Your soul is in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah Why? Because Allah doesn't accept your salah. Not holding you to account with your salah, you don't have any presence in the magnificence and munificence of Allah What are you but an epsilon? If you go 30,000 feet in the air you can't see yourself. You go outside of this galaxy you're non-existent, non-existent. Imagine the vastness of Allah's creation and you hold yourself as if you're something. The turuqs came to teach you, be nothing. If you're nothing you enter into this ocean of everything. And this is the only one praying to Allah So when it says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen between Sayyidina Muhammad is worshipping to Allah you are but in his ocean and he is the Imam and you are just the worshipper behind. When he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Kanabudu is the only one accepted by Allah Everyone else their imaginary salah is filled with nifaq, filled with hypocrisy, filled with every type of worship. Do you think really that when you're praying and you say, Ah the alone I worship but you're scared to death of dying of this sickness? So what is it you, the alone you worship? You think anybody reached to that reality? You got masks on, you got thing, I've seen people go to the airport with bags and bags on their suitcases, is that yakin Abu do? Is anything that we do even close to the alone I worship, if it was true your statement you would walk on water. So then my form keeping separate as nothing because as soon as I think it's me praying to Allah is me being important and what I'm asking from Allah Allah remind, oh go back and pray in jama'ah and remind yourself, what exactly are you doing? When you go into jama'ah the imam is making now big du'as. Because his qirat is good, his understanding is nice, he's making reciting, making reciting. And that's why they say, the Imam, you make the du'a, I say, Ameen, it's enough. So what do you think then in your soul? You think Allah's waiting to hear your du'a? 
or liwal hamd. The one whom He created to make a hamd and only one whom Allah is interested in hearing. So we're doing it in the physical world, we don't, don't understand what we're doing. So Allah is giving us like a wakil, the imam will represent you. Make sure your imam is good, right? So some mus they're all like doctors, proctologists, I don't know what kind of specialist they have. That wasn't supposed to be the imam. Allah said, leave a party of your people behind to study the deen. Don't take business people as imams. He's representing the whole jama'ah into Allah's Divinely Presence, has no khushya, has no cleanness. Wherever he's going in his heart, he's taking everybody with him. And the imam was the symbol of Sayyidina Muhammad when you choose an imam, you choose from amongst yourself the best ones, the one strongest and closest in the resemblance of the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad even to the extent of measuring the beard. Why? Because the imamiyah has to be Sayyidina Muhammad Why is a reminder for us, your imam is always Sayyidina Muhammad So the one who reflects that sunnah, he's the symbolic. And that when he prays, you're praying behind just saying, Ameen, Sami Allahu liman hamida, Ameen. When he's making du'a at the end, we're saying, Ameen. So where was our individual? Where's your iyaka nabudu? How come you don't ask at that time, where's my iyaka nabudu? We're praying in jama'ah, this must be a shirk because why is Imam doing that and I'm not reciting myself? Because they say, isn't iyaka nabudu the alone we worship? How could you then be praying behind the Imam? Because he seems to be worshipping and you're just saying, Ameen. And that's, that's the sharia of salah. So it's a misunderstanding of yaqa nabudu wa yaqa nasta'een. The understanding of thee alone I worship and thee alone I ask for aid, aid and support was not about me and you. We were supposed to annihilate in our imam. And Allah said, I'm going to call all of you with an imam on the Day of Judgment. Whom doesn't have an imam, shaitan is his imam. I'm going to call you with your imam because I know as soon as I ask you about your deen you're going to say, I don't know anything. So the one you prayed behind, let me ask him. But the haqqaiq and the reality of that was an immense reality. That that was a symbol for us that I'm nothing Ya Rabbi, that my whole case with Sayyidina Muhammad So Prophet is the one worshipping to Allah and we are just merely moving and our salah is even in the huruf of Ahmad, Alif, Ha and then you go into sujood is Meem and Tahiyat Dal. So you're Mimicking the huruf of Ahmad because it has so much immense power. And your reality and your wujud and your atomic reality which is the real you, the real one praying is an atom within the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah And that ocean is the one making salah, that ocean is the one making du'a and you just say, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen Ya Rabbi. Because that is the most purified light. When Allah wants the one to pray to him, wants the clean and pure one to pray to him. Not the dirty, the dirty don't come into the greatness of the presence of Allah They pray imitated prayer. But the great and purified one, Ta seen tilka ayat al-Qur'an wa al-kitab al-mubeen. When Sayyidina Taseen is making the salah, is the imam because the world of light we all mix. Just like we explain now in the world of form you're all standing in lines, now they have your lines six feet apart even more. If we come light by light by light by light we say, if 500 lights are in a room, how many lights are there in a room? 
one. So they say, oh, can one plus one plus one ever equal anything other than three? Of course. What elements are you adding of one? One drop, one drop, one drop is one drop. So means this, this haqqaiq of annihilating ourself was the very understanding. That's why when they start to say shirk, they say this, that, that, they didn't understand the door and Allah knows where they went and where they came from. The door was nothing, لَيْلَ أَنْتَ سُبْحَانِكَ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ I'm a dhalim and oppressor to myself, I took a path in which to be nothing Ya Rabbi. Their shaykhs reached to that nothingness, came back and taught people, don't be something. Don't think yourself important in Divinely Presence, before you know it you will have left from the imam, came up and they say, you know what, it's just me and Allah now. I don't need the Messenger of Allah he delivered a message and left and this becomes the Hizb shaitan and the way of the satanic thinking. All that dress and blessing then to be annihilated. The tariqahs they take us in that dress because the haqqaiq of Sayyidina Muhammad is the reality of Surat Al-Fatiha. These are seven holy verses and Allah described the most repeated verses and this has to do with the creation of the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad Means then the turuqs and all the tariqahs and all the shaykhs of tariqahs if, if, if they know that they're a shaykh of tariqah and they're representing tariqah, their door from Sayyidina Muhammad is not here. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is the crown of Sayyidina Muhammad Is the crown, is a, is a bi isma Allah ar Rahmanir Raheem is the crown and the taj of Sayyidina Muhammad Awliyaullah come and they sent onto this earth when they achieve what Allah wanted them to achieve. They don't bring them here but your jama starts here. So you have to know who you represent. So it means the character cannot be self-righteous and degrading and demeaning to people because they're what? Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim ghayr al maghdubi alayhim dalin. Mean what? The path of those whom you have bestowed your grace is the shaykh. His zawiya is the door of this reality. And who are his students? Those who've, um, who have incurred your wrath and those who have gone astray. That's why Sayyidina Muhammad makes them guides. Don't guide the crown of creation where you think you're guiding awliya. That, oh I'm, going, I'm only dealing with only the best of all, the best of the best of the best. No, it's the crown of Sayyidina Muhammad they don't need guides. They are guides. So means every zawiyah and every turuq has to know who they are and also guidelines for people who think they're going to go to find a shaykh or follow a path. The shaykh talks differently and the teaching is not in a way to with love and, and an ease to keep bringing people, bring people. Why? Because you're catching here's their door. When Sayyidina Muhammad is dispatching them, lower your wing so that you can relate to all people. Make it entertaining, make it beautiful, make it compassionate, make it loving for them. Why? Because they are all the people who angered Allah and have gone astray. Don't look at the gentlemen that have beards now and they look pious, 
But when they were out having good times and partying and they came into the door, they look pious now because they've been reverted. Majjay grabbed me from there, you know, taking people from the west, taking people from the east, taking people who left Islam, had nothing to do with Islam, people who came against Islam. That's where their door is and that's why their teaching is different. Self-righteous person, arrogant person, he think he's teaching up here, I only want the Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem people, I only want the clean people, I only want this and this and this. And that's why then the way they talk is, is a much more different talk. Nobody's a cursed people, nobody's a punished people. Everybody has to be under Allah's rahmah and mercy, otherwise why Allah needs you to guide people. Well Allah knows what they're doing wrong, so why He made you a guide if you just want to clarify how people are crappy, there's no needed. But Allah teaches you to overlook the faults, overlook the bad characteristics with whatever precaution they still have to take because some people are dangerous when they're not well. But their teaching is consistently trying to catch people, grab people. And then people who watch for the first time say, you talk very different, your teachings are very different because it's the gate at the bottom. Teaching highest level of realities like a juzba to attract the hearts and the minds of people. So they use an immense bait, immense bait of knowledges and powers and, and emanations so that those people will change from the bad character to the good character because they're not easy ones to change. It's not like you go to the place where everyone is in perfect worshipness and say, I'm a shaykh here now come on let's go. They're already all shaykhs there. But to come to a group of people and guide towards Allah's grace and rahmah. And their jama'ah were filled with people and they catch continuously people whom have gone astray, born into it, left it, walked away from it, whatever Allah wrote. Angered, yeah many of them had angered Allah for the crimes and actions that they did. No problem, this is the immensity of, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ I would not have sent you except that you are a mercy. This is the rahmah and the mercy of Sayyidina Muhammad So when they bring you, because this is Allah's tariq, when they bring you even they think they're Muslim, even they think they're praying, even they think they're doing actions, Allah knows that no, they have gone astray. Because Allah says in Surat Al-Munafiqeen, their shahada is even used to divert people. So even the one whom thinks he's Muslim, thinks he's praying, thinks his actions are good, he doesn't realize how really bad his action is and that he'll see something bad when he enters the grave because he doesn't have the love and the respect that he should be having for Sayyidina Muhammad We know many of those, we've come across them. Thinking they made salah, they did their zakah, they went hajj a couple times but they talk very negative, very unimportant and that is going to be tremendous disappointment when you're going to be raised where? You're going to be raised in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah You're not raised in Allah's presence, you're not going to breathe an air with Allah you're not going to take a shariq and to take a space and a proximity with Allah We are from the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah From that ocean you came and to that ocean you shall return like a drop, like a teardrop just right back into that. So then the tari tariqah comes to teach people, grab them. Whatever they think they're doing, they have gone astray. They have no power, they have no connection, they have no health, they have nothing. If they don't have the love of Sayyidina Muhammad shaitan loves Allah but he doesn't love Sayyidina Muhammad So bring everybody. When they bring everybody, 
This is nafsa amara. This gate, their zawiyas are the nafsa amara. And their job with the zikr, the ni'mat and the food of their soul that Allah gave to them is to change them from amara, move them up shawarma and make them now lawama, cook them. Make them lawama now that they believe. Why? Because all their teaching and remember all the teachings of the shaykh is going to teach you what? Ihdina siratul mustaqeem, ihdina siratul mustaqeem. You say, I was on the straight path. No, do you know who the straight path is? Sayyidina Muhammad one of Sayyidina Muhammad's name is Sayyidina Siratul Mustaqeem. If you're out and thinking like this, you're in danger. So the turuq come to teach you and they should be teaching you, you're nothing, you're nothing. Surrender yourself to be nothing and pour yourself back into a world of light in which you're nothing. Now you're guided to in a Sirat al Mustaqeem because not you Sirat al but Sayyidina Muhammad is the straight path. Me, I'll never be on straight path because there can be no two path, there's only one path. There's no two path that's straight, there's one path that's straight. Surrender yourself to your reality of who you are. And that you're an oppressor to yourself and don't trust yourself, don't give yourself a status and a glory. If, he, if they trained you and they brought your soul back into its reality, you follow their teaching, you are in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah Now every teaching that they give you at that reality you no longer exist. So this guy he died. His goals gone, you meet them, I want a career, I'm going to get this, I'm going to buy that, I'm going to have this insurance, I'm going to have that. Uh, at some point in time he's kind of gone, he doesn't know what he's doing anymore in his life, he doesn't know where his life is going, all his hopes and all the things his family has set out for him may not be what Allah was wanted. So they find the sense that they have collapsed all of that. They don't have that desire, they're, they're only asking now what is it that Allah wants from us to reach to that reality. Then they entered into Muhammadun Rasulullah so then they've been guided to the straight path. If you are inside now the reality and the haqqaiq of Sayyidina Muhammad then most definitely it's a straight path because you are inside the straight path. When Prophet stepping it's straight. That's why don't leave me for a blink of an eye to go back into the importance of my form. We start emailing the shaykh and this is like this, this is like this, teach the shaykh something. You didn't even annihilate yourself. You were supposed to be nothing, nothing, nothing enter into here. And that's why Allah gave in Surah the Kaf, don't ask until it's been told to you to ask. Because you're not surrendering in here. This little drop keeps trying to pop back in and have an existence and it keeps trying to pop out. They said there was a story about when they cooked the lentil for the lentil diet when they would cook, cook and then one lentil kept trying to jump out of the pot to find his individuality. The shaykh is cooking them, get back in to the dal, get back in because every drop trying to jump out and be individual again. This ocean is a mawt qabl al mawt. When Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq was describing, take a path of death before death. Why? Because only death brings this state for everyone. Death is the great equalizer where Pharaoh from the Prophets to Pharaoh when they die they're going to find out what the reality was. So mawt qabl al mawt, death before death. Is the turuqs and the shaykhs they guide you, surrender your form, surrender your importance. Don't think you know anything, empty your head, empty everything. 
and try to enter an ocean of taslim and submission and you find yourself doing the zikrs, the awrad, the practices, the immensity of the love of the Prophets will draw you into their ocean in which I realize my form is nothing and I feel myself when I'm making salawats that I'm being dressed by that fire's immensity of the love is dressing means what? You're now in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah That ocean is Bahru Qudra, an ocean that moving with the immensity of force and power. Every salawat, every durood, every dalal khirat being recited is immense power, immense realities. Now you understand then why you have barakah and why the shaykhs have barakah, why the tariqs have barakah because they are in these lights of Sayyidina Muhammad dressed with the lights of Siratul Mustaqeem and now they come to where? Iyyaka nabudu wa iyyaka nasta'een. There is no iyyaka nabudu wa iyyaka nasta'een if you're outside of that. How could you be worshipping Allah? If you're not in what Allah wanted you to be in, you're not in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, you're in La ilaha illallah and you. And you made, an, uh, you made for yourself an importance. And Allah then described, have you seen those who make their hawa, their desires, their Lord? Your nafsani approach would say, there's just me and Allah. They said, no, no, that guy got to go. And he's gone and he dies, it's nothing, I'm nothing Ya Rabbi, I'm in the ocean of Muhammad Rasulullah So when Prophet is praying, Ya Kanabudu Ya Kanastain, Prophet is praying and you're just merely the drop in the back like in the masjid, in the masjid say, Ameen all the time, say, Ameen, every salah I'm not nothing. Salah comes, Ya Rabbi I'm nothing, return me back into the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and the turuks train so when their imam is praying he has an immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad All of us are atoms within the salah of Prophet At that time Prophet ruhaniyat is making the salah and he's praying as our imam always. And as a result it's the same, he's praying at the end we're saying, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen Sabi Allah liman hamidah. We were always acknowledging because Prophet is always the Imam and his ahbab and lovers they represent that love. So it never changes with our physical and with our spiritual. Because when you pray with ahbab and the lovers more so, they, they, they carry that love of Prophet within their being. As a result this is the reality of Ya Kanabudu Ya Kanistain. Because when Sayyidina Muhammad is making the salah, we are just going for the ride and through the movements. When Sayyidina Muhammad makes du'a on our behalf we're all saying, Ameen and du'as being answered, blessings being given, everything. And that's why then when we taught, when you start to go up this Surah Fatiha by the shaykhs they're taking us into the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Maliki Yawmiddin If you entered into what real Iyaka Nabudu Iyaka Nista'een that you're in the soul of Prophet making the real salah to Allah then of course what do you think he's going to then dress you from the realities of Maliki Yawmiddin. And what is that dress? What is that blessing? What is the immensity of, of, of that najat that Allah granting that He's not going to burn the reality of Prophet He's going to burn all these things that didn't get it, they didn't understand. So we're going to have to clean them there. But if the ones whom understood and say, yeah, ooh, I'm nothing, they slaughtered themselves, they became nothing, 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 they're all in that reality. So then they're in the reality of Maliki Yawmiddin, who's the king of the day of judgment? Sayyidina Muhammad and he'll be making du'a to Allah Your light in that light, in that reality, under that shade and under that umbrella of reality. So the immensity of, of, of this reality is based on the door of nothingness. If I don't understand that I'm nothing and I don't understand where I am in this whole circle of creation, none of these teachings will make sense to you. 
And they keep coming back with that ridiculous phrase of shirk because the biggest shirk is to actually see yourself as a partner with Allah where you're still in a form. This is the shirk because this is the tawheed, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah The biggest shirk is the one whom still has his form and that he made himself as a partner and he didn't annihilate himself and his nafs has taken over all his actions and his nafs gave him an existence that is non-existence and it doesn't exist. Put you out into your own orbit, not into the orbit of Muhammadun Rasulullah So means then this is the reality of annihilation, is to be annihilated, coming to the door, asking to be nothing. The zawiyas are the place of, of refuge, they're oases in the dunya to bring people to that love and to that reality, to teach them what is Siratul Mustaqeem. And that's why, قُولْ قُولْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِيُونِي All of it is based on that. If tell them if they want my love فَاتَّبِيُونِي They should be with you Siratul Mustaqeem, they should be loving you, following you, following every example that you brought until they feel that they are within you, minhi wa minhum that you love them and they love you and you're from them and He is now appearing within you. Many, many different realities keep going on with all and then the Qur'an has a completely different understanding. If you try to understand Qur'an between you and Allah Ooh, that's kindergarten, that's way out, outside of adab. But between Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad is immensity. If we're inside that reality, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Qul A'udhu bi Rabbin Nas, Malikin Nas, Ilahin Nas. Throughout all of these realities, the immensity of what Allah is, is dressing and blessing is all the haqqaiqs of Sayyidina Muhammad We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with this holy month of Qamar and the holy month of the moon and that the light and the love of Sayyidatina Fatima Salam, al Batul salam to dress us and bless us with the holy purified lights of Qur'an to illuminate those lights within our heart for the love that we have for Sayyidina Muhammad for the light of Ahlul Bayt and the love we have for Ahlul Bayt wa Ashab and Nabi and awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard wa bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.